In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all as we gather here this morning to say farewell to Sean and to pray for his eternal happiness. Sean has reached the end of one stage of life, the life that we live in this world, and he now arrives at the next stage where he goes to the life of eternity in the glories of heaven. Parting is a time of sadness and mixed emotions and a time when support is greatly appreciated. And on behalf of the people of the parish gathered here today and those joining us in prayer from afar, to Maureen, Michael, Anne, Orla, Kevin, Ronan, Shane, Lucy, Julie and Amy, to Sean's son-in-law, sons-in-law and daughters-in-law, his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, extended family and friends. We offer you our support and we pray for God's comfort for you at this time. We've just begun the celebrations of Easter where we celebrate that Christ rose from the dead and his promise is that we too shall rise and we too shall live with him. For a few moments now we place ourselves in God's presence and we remember Sean with fondness and we pray for his eternal repose. We commend him to the Lord. And as we do so, maybe think of a memory that you have yourself of Sean that is special to you. Something that he said or did. Some bit of advice that he might have given. Some time that was shared. A time of happiness. And we're also going to bring to the altar now just a few small items, symbols of Sean's life and his interests. Symbols being brought up by his grandchildren, Keen, Ben, Ruby and Ronan. So we'd like to be seated just for a few moments. And so to represent Sean's love of farming, we have his cap. And the cap represents his love of the land and the love of all things of nature.
And the second thing that we'll be bringing, representing his support of the GAA, is a jersey. And football was just a huge passion for Sean. Albeit a Cavan man, he was an avid supporter of the Royal County. And also we have a photo of representing his love of animals. We bring all our memories together now and present them along with Sean to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Sean, also find new strength. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. And please be seated now as we listen to our readings from the Scriptures, and Lucy and Ethan are going to lead us in the readings. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. God has appointed Jesus to judge everyone, alive and dead. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true, God sent his word to the people of Israel and it was them, to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all men and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. to the Lord my refuge. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ is the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed in his death. For everything is to be put under his feet. Though when it is said that everything is subjected, this clearly cannot include the one who subjected everything to him. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel. and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about all this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought that they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could still not believe it, and they stood there dumbfounded. So he said to them, have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. He then told them, this is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, so you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> On Saturday night last, we gathered around a fire outside the church here in a rite that has its origins in the very early church we bless the Paschal fire, and from it we lit the Paschal candle that stands here at Sean's coffin today. The church was filled with light as we brought the large candle further and further into the church, and the light increased even more as each person in the congregation had their own candle lit. Easter is a celebration of light, a celebration that brings light to our eyes and light to our understanding. And we listened that night to the stories, the stories from the Old Testament that tell us how God created the world and ourselves in all its beauty for us to live in and enjoy here. 
and how he saved his people from the flood and how he saved them again from Pharaoh. And in the New Testament, we heard how God now refreshes and gives life through water and baptism and how in his greatest act of saving, how the Father sent Jesus as our saviour to lead us out of the realms of darkness, to lead us into his wonderful light. And that's why Easter is a celebration of light and joy in which Jesus shows that darkness has not overcome and that life prevails, death is conquered. And this is the source of our comfort today as we gather to lay Sean to rest, as we hand him over to the Lord who came to bring us good news and who asks us to share it with others. In all the Gospels that we hear every day during this week, we hear of the appearances of Jesus after his resurrection from the dead. And there are similarities in the way that the stories are told. There's usually a moment when the disciples refuse to believe. We hear the story of the encounter of Jesus with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and they didn't recognize Jesus until he broke bread with them. And in the gospel today that we just heard, Jesus asked them, why are there doubts rising in their hearts? We're told too that realizing it was Jesus, that their joy was so great that they still couldn't believe it. And they stood there dumbfounded. But at the end of the apparition stories, the effect is nearly always the same. Having experienced Jesus risen from the dead, they have to pass on the news. The women who discovered the empty tomb on Easter Sunday morning came running to tell Peter and John. The disciples on the road to Emmaus do a U-turn and return to tell their friends back in Jerusalem. And in the gospel that we just heard today, they are told that they have to be witnesses to go and tell the news of the forgiveness of sins to all they meet. You are the people who must testify on my behalf. And we all have something to pass on to others. I remember speaking with Sean many times over the past number of years. And anyone who has ever spoken with him will know that he just said things as he saw them. Of course, Sean loved story and he loved history. We chatted about the old cemetery close to the Boyne up near his tyre business. He knew all the significant dates relating to it. And in the waiting room, he had the old photos of the seaweed bats at Laytown and some of his winners at the Laytown races. And of course, that article about the county boundaries, he maintained that he was neither in Meath nor Louth because of the positioning of the signs welcoming people to those counties. And so he welcomed people to the no man's land in between, which he declared to be McManus country, McManus land. I think he was very chuffed about that. Sean arrived to Laytown in the late 50s. As we mentioned at the beginning of Mass, he was a cavern man from Balagna. He always had several businesses on the go at the one time. There was the hackney driving, and the bookmaker and the tyres. He always believed in a very hard working ethic, something that anybody that worked for him experienced. And he instilled that into them too. Margaret was a native of Laytown, and the two married, and together they raised a large family of ten children, six girls and four boys. Laytown was their home when they were growing up, and it remained their home. As we recalled at the beginning, both Sean and Margaret were keen lovers of animals, feeding the birds and welcoming the stray. Sean always had the dog by his side as a companion, and as his co-pilot when he was driving anywhere. He enjoyed the horses too and was a committee member of the Laytown races, a position that he enjoyed immensely. Sean enjoyed the simple things, being out and about, meeting with people and chatting with them about the weather, about the farming and the crops, or about the football and how the team got on or didn't get on. And as I mentioned, he'll always be remembered for his straight-talking approach in life and his sharp wit, something that will be so missed by his family and friends and the wider community that knew him over the years. In some ways, he was quiet and reflective. 
And yet, he always had an eye out for people who were in need. He contributed to many charities, but always quietly so, without drawing attention to himself. It's good for us today to tell the stories about Sean and who he was for each of us, and to reflect on our own lives and the examples that we give too, the influence that we can have on each other. The scriptures remind us to bring Easter joy into people's lives through the practical supports we can give each other, being there for people in their times of need, their times of trouble, and praying for each other too. I often saw Sean at Mass here or during the week stopping off to come in and say a prayer in the church. And today it's we who are doing the praying, asking God to bring him to his eternal home. And there he'll be united with Mags and his sister Maureen and all those we love who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. May the Lord fill us with his light at this time of parting, assuring us of a place of rest and peace for Sean and for ourselves when our time in this world is over and where we'll all be reunited once again. This Sunday coming is the Feast of Divine Mercy, a feast that fills us all with hope, reassuring us that there is a place for all of us, just as we heard in the first reading today. May Sean receive the rewards of his sharing of God's love, and may he be welcomed into the joys of heaven by Jesus today. And so we pray, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we have our prayers of the faithful. And so let us pray with confidence and trust in the power of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and whose promise is that one day we shall be like him. We pray for our grandfather Sean and our late grandmother Margaret and the deceased members of the McManus, Monaghan and McCabe families. May God grant them eternal rest. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for all of those who are ill or suffering, especially those affected by the war in Ukraine. May God grant them solace and hope in their days of need. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of Sean's carers who assisted him with care over the past five years. We pray especially for the doctors, nurses and administrative team at Brookside Medical Practice, for Sean's GP, Dr. Seamus Keaveney, and for the staff of Carlingford Nursing Home. We thank them for all their care, assistance and kindness throughout Sean's life. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, whose days are without end and whose mercies are beyond counting, keep us mindful that life is short and the hour of death unknown. Let your Spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of holiness and justice, that we may serve you in union with the whole Church, sure in faith, strong in hope, perfect in love. And when our earthly journey is ended, lead us rejoicing into your kingdom, where you live for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as our gifts of bread and wine are brought to the altar.
favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Sean, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of the world Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Tom our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember your servant, Sean, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we now have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lighting the sky 
Casting its shadows near And on this morning Bright though it be I feel those shadows near me But you Close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you, following all your ways. Lord, I watch the sunlight shine through the clouds, warming the earth below. And at the midday, life seems to say, I feel your brightness near me. For you are always close to me. Following all my ways May I be always close to you Following all your ways, Lord Guarding the night Waiting till morning comes The air is silent Earth is at rest Only your peace is near me Yes, you are always close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you, following all Lord
smiling face Every thought, every word Is lost in your embrace Ave Maria Dominus tecum benedicta tu. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Sean, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Sean, and now we come to the last farewell. There's sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Sean again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation may disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. response to the song of farewell is receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. The soul, the Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. The May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. 
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Sean, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Sean in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. <coughs> Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother Sean forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And in peace now let us take our brother to his place of rest. to thee. 